Peter Hudson, Head of Training and Recruitment of the World Golf Teaching Federation, Great Britain, Ireland, and founder of YGA. And tonight's webinar is a really interesting uh, one because I think for, for in the first place, it's just a statement of possibility rather than I think that 100k plus should be your target but I want to make it very very clear that that is more than a possibility once you have the unique skills and you know we've, we've done some work on this before where we talk about eight of these specific skills the rapport know how people learn know what people can learn um, so the technique um, questioning and listening skills the art of giving effective feedback, operating in an egoless state yourself as a coach and also being able to help the client get into those uh, egoless states. And, for, and that's in to try and get into the present and into the moment and all of the things that can be achieved from that place. How to project, manage any issue, any desire that the client wants and obviously being able to effectively market that. And this is a little bit about what tonight is about. I also, I just wanna, uh, on, the, on the invite to the webinar, um, I said that even though this was the, the banner headline was to earn 100K, plus that it is to decide um, on any amount that you want to earn or even if you want to um, to give your lessons away for free now ie maybe some of you wanted to to keep your uh, amateur status in the current uh, legal climate all I say is that for the most part your client probably won't have as high a value on the product the lower the price especially free so that if you're gonna do that and you have these skills, then please make sure that some donation is given to a charity of some sort. Not just for the sake of the charity, but isn't that fantastic to have all these skills and you'd have definitely have invested money in, in me and the trainings that we do to get those skills. So if, you're lucky enough to be in a financial situation then some other people aren't so give that raise money for charity which is also good for the client because then they have a, a value to what they're they're having so I think again if we go back to the decision-making strategies that would be good for you it's good for those for those that uh, you're intimate with, it's good for those that you're close to and it's good for the greater good. I think that really does fit in all four quadrants. Um, and obviously um, also respects those coaches around you that have also learned those skills that are um, using those skills to earn money. So let's just have a, a very quick look at um, what it is that you'd have to do to earn 100k plus um, and then see that it doesn't matter what you choose to do then you could use roughly the same formula it will be this the, the, the same idea um, I came across this um, um, I can't remember on whose website it was um, but it would have been something that uh, many of you in marketing may have seen before um, and it, we're gonna go very much into the the fact that we're going to put the 100k plus um, up in the first place and then the next thing to do is is to assess what we want um, from a, a high-end client now i don't even think that i'm actually putting this into high end um, i think i'm putting this to medium to high so if if i say that in this area that i want to get 3,000 um, from each of my clients then uh, simply I would need 34 
I would need 34 So if, if I say that we want 3,000 from each client, so there's a simple transaction to work out that we need 34 clients. So that first part is reasonably simple to put together, which is going to give us an income of uh, 102,000. So then what we've got to do is work out what our perfect demographic is. And I think this is the most important part of this, is that we need to identify exactly, specifically, everything about the type of person that this is going to be. Well, certainly if we want referrals, they're going to have to be coachable. They're going to have to be the type of person that is used to receiving information, probably is good at receiving feedback and therefore you know, good at being in the present. They're going to probably be successful in some way, shape or form. Um, they're probably going to be used to success, but also might recognise somebody um, that, has, that they can trust to, to give them these, um, these criteria. Um, we might want to put some handicap criteria on that. So obviously if someone's going to give you £3,000 over a period of a year, then they should want some sort of um, goal that has got some depth to it. So maybe from 28 to single figures or, or low double figures or from um, um, from the teens to say four handicap or maybe from single figures to scratch. So some sort of goal that um, is worth, that worth their while um, and that they would think was significant to value the 3,000. Now again, uh, for me, this is simple how this, I, I would just call this unlimited lessons. Now, I'm not saying that there wouldn't be some uh, lots and lots and lots and lots of added value in that for my medium to high end client. But basically, it would, it would have the flexibility to give these 34 people unlimited lessons um, and uh, be able to take them on this journey um, to their success, which would make it worthwhile for everybody. So, you know, where are these people? Again, um, to find 34 people um, in London or, or in any town or conurbation wouldn't be very, very hard at all. Maybe a little bit more of a struggle in the Outer Hebrides, maybe this wouldn't be the one that you would target for this particular uh, venture. Um, what would their net worth be? So, you, you know, if they're going to have £3,000 of, uh, of, of, of disposable income, uh, you know, they're probably going to be, I don't know, 50 to 60k plus a year. Um, if they've got that amount of time to spend on golf, they, they, they probably be self-employed, retired, um, they um, may work shifts, um, specific, uh, you know, something that they're earning big money, but, um, you know, they've got lots of time during the day. So again, the, you, it's amazing how that, the more you think about this, how that criteria uh, unfolds. And there's probably an awful lot more within this area, but it, it's the, the essence of it is to describe exactly who it is that you're looking for. And then the last part of the equation is the systems uh, and processes that you have in place to one, find these people, um, and then convert into a sale and succeed. Because with the success, that moves us into the referral market. So, the great thing about this particular model is you don't necessarily need any place to teach. So some of you may be thinking, well, you know, I'm just 
you know, very um, much on my first step of the ladder. Where do I teach? Where do I build up these experiences? And again, I think that what we discovered on previous marketing extravaganza um, seminars, um, so we, we used to do um, a two-day um, uh, mastery seminar in marketing, uh, and this very much helped people um, discover what niche is or what speciality they could put into um, into the field of golf because we know that we've got this this terrible thing that people play from two to ninety two from all ages um, uh, and both sexes and and it's just such a huge pool that we're in and one of the the challenges uh, of the WGTF and the YGA is first of all to recognise, as we have done, that most of the coaching that's going on, despite the, you know, however um, polite and gentlemanly or ladylike the coaches are, there's not a huge amount of success going on because of the remit, i.e. that they're sitting in golf clubs and they're waiting for people to come in the door and they're just uh, people come along, have a couple of lessons, and may or may not get a little bit better. Uh, but they're just responding to that that market that's been there forever that doesn't really work. So one, we needed to gain the skills that some of these other organisations don't have, and then two, we've got to direct those skills. So once you've got the skills, then you know you can begin and in the first place teaching in your back garden or in a shed or some people build extensions to their houses or an indoor studio whether that's something they share with other people that have got indoor studios or, or they rent or they find an industrial unit, a small industrial unit to operate from. Fields, uh, sports fields, school fields, college fields, uh, the usual driving ranges and golf courses uh, but again this is where you have to be very careful. Um, to, to probably not get involved too much with the proprietor um, but to have a you bring your own client kind of attitude to it. Um, abroad, um, which again I'm going to talk about a little bit later on. Um, and, and then other opportunities that are, that are in that market. So there's, there's, there's quite a few ways that you can get the experience with these skills to then start realising that you can put any figure into this equation and any niche into this equation into that equation. And the niches are many folds as well. Um, again, you know, we probably brainstormed one of, one of the, the wonderful things about having, I mean we've had up to 20 people in a room for the, for the marketing extravaganza and the brainstorming that, that comes from that is really quite wild. And, and, and over the years we've probably created a minimum of 200 niche market opportunities um, from schools, colleges, private, prisons, um, councils, working for underprivileged, caddy services, practice services, holidays, winter camps, junior summer camps and, and so they go on and on and on. I mean, the junior summer camp is, uh, that's always appealed to me as something that, you know, just for, for six weeks you could, you know, rent some accommodation at a private school, use their fields and then take them off to play golf and, and add some, you know, some NLP skills uh, and, and development and education and etiquette. You, you know, I think that you'd sell them a hundred times over and you could make an awful lot of money just in six weeks. And they'd all fit into to this plan. So we've got to know, you know, our market. And our market is, you know, they're mostly frustrated golfers. And they're all frustrated golfers because, you know, beginners don't know yet that they're going to get frustrated. And if we use our skills, they'll never have to feel frustrated. So once we understand that this market exists and all we've got to do is get these skills, then it's just how we fulfil that market. And I think the, the, the first, the second step in this, in, in this particular strategy is the message. And 
most of the messages that we see in marketing are about um, what you know I can do as a golf coach whereas they probably need to be more on the lines of what's in it for me so that whatever market that you're of this part that you're trying to tap into with your various locations and your various niches then it's how you're going to solve your client's problem or bring them the success that they haven't currently enjoyed. The, the media is the next step along then taking your product to market and without a doubt this is something that you know may um, scare a few of you and others may be a little bit younger think that you can actually really use this to um, to monopolize all of your advantages of, of your skill set but certainly everything that we do at stage one and two and three for that matter is about getting everybody to communicate far more effectively whether it's through emails Facebook LinkedIn tweeting and it, again, just the the fact that you know we've asked you to set up um, tweets, uh, Twitter accounts, and retweet any tweet that you get from me, and then that works vice versa. When you start to to Twitter, then we'll retweet, and that's going to just grow that whole thing organically. Your, how many people you can get to with whatever your niche product uh, particularly is. Sometimes that media, you know, you want to check that whatever niche that you've picked, you know, has a simple way to reach the media. So, you know, one of the simplest ways that um, when I, I, I stop training golfers to become golf coaches is I want to be abroad working and I'm going to use agents uh, around all the Baltic areas um, to bring couples to me and, um, and the UK as well. And let's say in the UK, you know, um, and I, I don't know, I, I'm presuming Saga exists uh, outside of the UK as well. Saga is, you, you know, the natural place to go and advertise because, you know, what do Saga people have? They, they have money. They, you know, otherwise they wouldn't invest in those uh, Saga products. So what a wonderful way. Again, you know that the demographic fits you. I'm looking for couples. Uh, I'm looking for the, the retired couples with income to spare that want to go on holidays in the sun in winter well what could be better than saga there, there might be some other uh, places i can go as well but it makes a natural media to take advantage of the your own facebook you know for those people that are um you, you know fanatical facebook workers you know there's you can use all your friends and relatives to spread the message of, of what it is that you're doing so once you've got this, and then you, you, you must have an irresistible message. And that irresistible message um, you know, has to be something that has tremendous value to the client, yet doesn't have a cost to you. So more or less be in that information area. And again, we're, there's something that I heard a long while ago which, which really impressed me, is you know, information is the only thing that you can give away and yet keep. And I think that's a real uh, example of why giving away information is so powerful because you can have the same information and give it away again and again and again and again and yet that's then going to get you your lead capture. So by giving away that free information, by creating ebooks, uh, creating information that people can tap into that, you know, whether we like it or not, due, due to Charles Seashore, we know that information only uh, will not guarantee change and most people, 99% of all those people just receiving information won't change. They'll still need the advantage of the coach. So this gets us the lead capture. Then we've got people, we've got people finding out about our product. So, you know, maybe if, if we could close 10% um, of these people, then, you know, we only need about 340 um, people to tap into to get lead, lead, uh, lead from these lead generation tools to get them down to get our 34. 
And then, you know, the final work is follow up and conversion. Again, follow up and conversion. Follow up is just, you know, getting in there and doing it. Conversion, yeah, you may need to add some marketing skills. Certainly some of the NLP again, um, the NLP skills in the persuasion engineering uh, allows you to succeed in, the, in, this, in this particular place. There's lots of other things that are going to have to be present here. Desire, shared values, um, and these are all the things that will make a difference into you converting the right the, the, the people. But if you've gone to the trouble to identify who you think is most likely to sign up, this conversion will be far easier because you know that they'll have all the desires and all of the values in place that will make this transition into uh, a client and part of your 100K network uh, possible. So again, this can be anything from you, you know 10K if you want a part-time to, to 90K, there's a sliding scale there. You may want to make this 10,000 pounds and only have 10 clients, or you may might to make this you know, 100 pound and have 100 clients. It doesn't really matter how you do it, as long as once you've decided, you put in and you find your perfect clients and how you're gonna find those perfect clients. What we're saying is, without a doubt, is that this, the, 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 the current way of people coming in with all sorts of things going on um, without commitment to change, without commitment to long-term processes, um, it won't get you the income. We know that we need to build relationships. And for a relationship to work, you have to go to a lot of effort. So I'd be interested to get your feedback from this tiny little snippet of, of marketing designed mostly to try and change your beliefs of what you think is possible. Change how you look at the market and change how you get these skills that will allow you the freedom to operate anywhere in the marketplace that you choose for both your benefits and for your clients' benefits and therefore those around you and for the greater good. So I look forward to um, your responses. Uh, call me on 07939 584 010 with any questions and um, thank you for listening.